we had to spend a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars on a microphone. Yep. Now it's like, I mean, this. Shit, you can this buy is mic. my Apple mic that came with the uh, with my phone. That's my point. How much was that? Oh, it came with the phone. Phone was probably seven hundred bucks, but. <clears throat> That's amazing, Smitty. I am hearing a little static every now and then. Let me make sure I close everything else out. <coughs> All right, got that. You're still all dressed up. Haven't taken that tie off. I don't even want, I'm going to go to sleep in this. <laughs> <laughs> you on bacon? Oh, I'm asleep in my tie tonight. Uh, People treat me like a king when I have this stuff on, man. <laughs> People treat me like a, I don't know why it is. I promise you, I'm gonna start dressing up. It's just too damn. Sometimes it's too cold. Then the other times too hot. Yep. Well, how you doing, brother Smitty? I'm I'm ready for shorts weather. Shorts and a t-shirt. I'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> hey class good lord hanging out this evening still coming yeah chris i'll see you saturday i'll see you saturday i'm gonna come up to hopefully i can uh get a few minutes of class real quick i just wanted to bring you you can go ahead babe. I, I i can't hear nothing mm -hmm. Smitty had a lead. I thought that was really cool how this thing came all together, brother Smitty. Looking for deals. Yeah, man. So tell me how this thing came about. What, and... what is it Lou Brown says? Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was nice just to share with the class as we raise peeps financial literacy. I thought it was cool how you put this deal together. Smitty, tell me why this thing was on your radar. Well, it's not a done deal yet, but uh, it's coming we're, uh, we're getting there. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, well, I found found the deal because I was helping you. Um, you had bought a house in this neighborhood last summer, and I'm real big on recycling, and uh, so I was over there uh, picking up scrap metal and crap and. Um, the guy across the street came over and uh, was helping me. And of course, there was a lot of old furniture in this house. I mean, they, <laughs> these well, it, as you and I found out later, these people went in the house even after I had locked up and left. <laughs> they went and got more stuff. But, uh, but anyways, you know what um, we did? Yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. The one that the the tear down where uh, with the yeah. new construction. So so, anyways, I was, you know, as the new construction on that site has proceeded, I just kept in the back of my mind this house across the street because the guy that was living there was stealing his electricity. He had uh, jumped the meter because um, the meter had been turned off for lack of payment, and. Uh, so I knew that it's been sitting there now since what, September, October, whenever they finally cut the power. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then you introduced me to the app Deal Machine. Mm -hmm. um, let me see if I can show it on the camera. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's Deal Machine, and you can do a 14-day free trial. So as I was out riding around, you just with with the deal machine app, you just roll up in front of the property. You you guide the with a cursor to make sure you got the prop you're on the proper address. You snap a picture and then you can send a postcard to the owner right from there. Um, the other thing that you can do within the app, you can do skip tracing. Um, but in this case, I saw that it showed that it was absentee owned, which I knew that it was. And um, sent a postcard, and you and I were sitting in a class in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, a couple of weeks ago, and got a <laughs> got a phone call from the owner on this. And uh, he's he's over in Texas. 
he wants to sell it. So we start a conversation then. And unfortunately, I've had some family issues that popped up and I had to head up to New York after that. So I, I, what I don't recommend is that you let any time go between uh, your appointments or your calls, your follow-ups. Um, and this one, I got lucky because I did let two weeks slide. But uh, I reached out to him today. He saw the missed call, called me back, and um, the uh, what he told me was, and he had told me in the initial conversation that he wanted to get a, a realtor to look at it. He has, and they gave him a bro. They didn't try to live for price opinion. And um, but you broke up. You broke up. Smitty. I asked him right out. I said, "Hey, if we you can." Broke up, Smitty. What did he say? Uh, agree on terms and price. Smitty, oh. you, you broke up. You said he he got his realtor and what? Sorry about that. So yeah, he reached out to a realtor who gave him a broker price opinion, a BPO. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And um, and then I I asked the I asked the question. I said, "Well, are you?" ready to sell i said if, if we can agree on price and terms are you w ready to sell and he said well i'll have to notify my brother but um uh, i'm i'm ready to sell he's like yes i'm gonna sell so i want to hear more about this realtor uh if i could stay here for a minute for the framework on the conversation between the sure. seller and the realtor what tell me rewind a little bit on that well, I don't know what all transpired in that conversation, but from from when I first spoke to the gentleman two weeks ago, he had said that he needed to um, talk to a realtor and see what it was worth. And he has somehow, I didn't ask who or anything, he has somehow reached out to a realtor and he said they gave him a BPO, which is mm -hmm. a broker price opinion, um on the property that's a little higher than i want to pay but um we'll get to that that's the starting point <laughs> yeah that's the starting point i wanted to just stay there for a minute because a lot of clients and people think that it's the end of the world when sellers go talk to a real tour smitty and i just want you to kind of dispel that myth we don't care if they talk to yeah. a realtor either way no not at all. Um, now, if it was an aggressive realtor, they would have pushed for a listing. Mm -hmm. um, I have no idea who he talked to, but apparently they weren't particularly aggressive or, or he was just set that he didn't want to, to list it. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. But he did tell me that he did not. That I asked him right out. I said, are you planning on listing it? I said, and I explained the benefits that I could provide. Um, with a quick closing nice. and, um, that's what I particularly said. I didn't, in this case, I didn't say it would be an all cash offer, but I just said you could save, you don't need to go pay in a commission. We can do this without a realtor and, uh, we'll be able to close quickly. Oh, wow. I like that. You're talking to, you're talking to magic language, my friend. I've learned from the best, Chris. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know that. I know you. <laughs> I am blessed to be behind the camera often with you. <laughs> well, I mean, you know what? I, I can't take credit for all that stuff, man. We both studied with Ron LeGrand, so. True, true. So you got that, and so he already knows the BPO. So we're in the boat rowing. You're in the boat. He's already got a number in his mind, which is going to be on the same planet. It's not like you're on different planets with that number, right? Correct. Yes. So where are we at now with that, Smitty? What's the story? So I set up a, he was busy this evening. Uh, and when I was speaking with him, he was, it was hard for him to hear. It was pretty noisy. Um, so we set up a follow up call for tomorrow evening. And, um, my my intentions to find out what we can do to close the deal um, on the phone and get paperwork yeah. ready and send it out to him. Very good. Now, 
you know, a little bit more of the backstory, that guy that was helping me clean out the house that you tore down um, and that was living in this house, this subject property, he is the oh, you, brother. You met the guy um, living in the house with no power, Smitty? Yes. Oh, shoot. I did not know yeah. that. I thought you were talking he, about the other brothers from the, no, the no. we looked at two houses over there. I, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, that, no, not that brother. No, the one that was living in this subject house that I'm after right now, um, he 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 is the brother of the owner. He was living there basically free. Um, you know, it was the old family homestead, and uh, he was living there basically free and <laughs> with no electricity, or mm. actually mm. stolen electricity. Um, Good lord. You know, once once that got cut off, he may have moved out because you you know it's just too darn hot here in Virginia mm -hmm. in the summertime. So your intention is to do that. I wanted to ask you about There's something else. Something else you told you told me, Smitty. So so my you know I will tell you the exit plan. You know this one I'll probably wholesale. Maybe you'll buy yeah. it. Maybe you'll maybe you'll uh, build on that lot, but um, you know it's just a little tiny house, it's two bedroom, one bath. Like I said, it was the original family homestead built in 1911. It's only 676 square feet, um, but it sits on a nice lot. It's uh, just a hair under a quarter acre, but it is a buildable lot. It's the same exact size a lot as yours was across the street. And that's what really, uh, you know, interested me in it because um, even with a real big house, I think that one ended up being four bedroom, three bath, didn't it? Uh, uh, either two and a half, maybe. Yeah, but um, there's still plenty of land. You know, it's not that it just totally overcrowds the the lot. Um, so th this will be a nice family house for somebody once we tear it down and. Build a new one. I like that. Yeah, I would love to see about doing it if we can make the numbers work for everybody. But you're close, though. I think the good thing about this, Smitty, if he's at forty with the real tour, that means you already get to deduct six percent off of that, right? Which is what six times four. And be twenty four hundred. So let's say three grand. So you're at twenty. I mean, thirty seven, and then I mean you can always. Back out another three, four thousand to me. You can back out a few more thousand based yeah. on closing costs, and um, that was what I was planning. Now I do know he has a a note on the property. He has a, a yeah. deed of trust for about twenty five thousand. He did tell me that in our oh, initial wow. phone call. Okay. Um. So he's not going to net much, but he knows that. You know, he's he <laughs> he went with exactly the number that. Uh, the the broker told him or the agent. Mm -hmm. hmm. Forty years because you got to tear it down. It's gonna be every bit of seven or eight over there. Yeah, it's probably got. It? Well, I don't. I don't. I doubt. Well, anything that old's got some asbestos in it. <laughs> well, what about trees? Remember that we had those big old trees on the other one. How about, are there any trees on here? There are trees on the property, but they don't encroach the house like they did on yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. That was another couple grand. Yep. Came back and, quick. And that was cheap. <laughs> yeah, that dude was cheap, Smitty. That was cheap. <clears throat> You're right. Well, this is cool, class. I just wanted to, one, bring you into and teach with you and lecture with you instead of at you. Smitty's using the deal machine, sending out postcards. And I, how many postcards did you send out to get one call, Smitty? Well... In this case, I kind of lucked into it, but again, you know, I've been watching the property. I knew what it, I knew a lot about it because of the time that we spent over um, on your property. And and again, I you know I I don't know the family closely, um, but um, the one brother who was living there, he has some addiction issues. Uh, this other brother who actually owns the property uh, lives out of state, so you know that's that's a perfect situation you know motivated seller was sitting several states over with a empty property that he's paying taxes on where is he at by the way smitty he's in texas oh what city uh el paso okay 
Yeah. Nice. So, um, yeah, could be a nice, sweet deal. Yeah, that is nice. The two things I wanted to talk about was the realtor. Don't be scared to get a realtor involved because at the end of the day, we want our sellers to be as aware, as informed as much as possible so they can make an educated decision. And I don't care if they don't just real just meeting. I mean, what about you? Did, did it bother you at all? Not at all. I mean, <laughs> you know, he, like I said, two weeks ago, he told me that he was going to um, talk to a realtor. And, you know, I, you know, at that time, I, I also put the idea in his head, you know, the benefits that we can provide, um, you know, by saving commission. And then I reiterated that again today, you know, saving commission, closing quickly and, you know, that you don't need to spend that money for commissions. There you go. You're saving money. Yeah, everybody likes to save a few dollars. Absolutely. That's sharks, baby. Okay. Anything else? Well, it was a deal machine, real tour, and the fees. Like, you're going to... You're going to be able to subtract subtract those fees on your offer. So that's that's some a negotiating tool for you. Yes. Yeah. All right, man. This is a short lecture today in my class. Mitty, anything you'd like to leave for our viewers today or regarding just real estate in general? Just you know, like you like you said, don't don't. And it kind of ties in. I'm doing a lot of stuff with John Asaraf and overcoming fears. Um, you know, John Asraf's a personal development coach, but just don't let the fears get in your way. Um, you know, for, for the class, <laughs> Chris knows I have been a professional student <laughs> for many years. Um, yes, I've done deals. I own a property, but um, I've let fear get in the way and uh, I've, you know, I'm, I'm just over it. But you just got, though. yeah, you just got, but you just got to take the action, you know, and, um now you, you had asked how many cards i had sent out i found this deal on the two-week trial so the two-week trial they give you a certain number of credits and i probably only sent out 20 25 cards i think my credits were about 25 bucks wow i did, I did a couple of skip searches i did not use skip search much on it because it costs the same amount as sending out a card but again, this particular property, I knew it. I just chose Deal Machine as the way to contact the the owner rather than going and doing a skip trace myself on it and mm -hmm. sending a card or a letter. Gotcha. Um, you know, the, the neat thing about that app is that it actually, the, the postcard is personalized. Um, I just use the default link wording that's that Deal Machine has, um, but it sends a picture of the house, so they know you actually drove by the house or you had somebody because you, you can use agents, you know, mm -hmm. field agents uh, to drive for dollars and use that and send them, um, you know, so so they they know that you're legit. You've actually been by the house. Yeah, that is so sharp. So the postcard has a picture their name or whatever language i want to buy your house mr smith or whatever yep exactly mr jones oh, that's so sharp did you get any yeah. postcard returns me um i have not wow that's pretty damn i don't know but i mean you know it's only 25 you know so it's a real small number now <laughs> it's true. i'm not gonna, i'm 25 i'm not gonna be doing a deal a month um mm -hmm. but um and, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a start, you and it, it's like... one method of prospecting and mm -hmm. finding your prospects. That is so cool. All right, Smitty, thank you for taking the time to hang out with me, my friend. Hey, you're welcome, Chris. Anytime. Yeah, tomorrow I got to figure out how I'm going to do this staging, but I'll get up with you in the morning on that. No worries. All right. All right, class, that's all I have for you tonight. I don't know if you got any Q&A for Smitty on here. Let me see. Any questions? I love the Q&A. It's really where the rubber hits the road. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if this content is beneficial to your life. I hope that it is. I feel like I'm on a late night talk show. I mean, radio <laughs> show. <laughs>
Late night with Smitty and Chris. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Welcome to the ride. You are here at WW. What can we call it? WWMM. WW making money. There you go. <laughs> we are here. Let's see. Any questions for Smitty on here? Angela, the app. Oh, yeah, she wants to know how much that app was, Smitty, after the 14-day trial. Angela Ford, good question. They have a couple of different programs. The basic one is like $49.50. What um, do you get with that? Just the technology to locate the seller? It, uh, no, yeah, and then you've got to pay for the card. So basically, you're, you're, it's the fee to use their technology. Uh-oh. I see you still. Okay. Yeah, I hadn't seen you. It was yelling at, or it was showing me a screen that said Todd's MacBook. <laughs> so a, give me a give me a framework or a forty thousand foot view, if you will, of how this deal machine works, Smitty. Because we didn't even get into that. Yeah. So so the way that it works um, when you're out driving for dollars. So it it's designed for just that driving for dollars. Um, you pull up on a house that you're interested in, you know, whether it be, you know, you're overgrown, uh, looks vacant, um, you know, run down, trash all <laughs> over the place, you know, some, some sign that looks like it's distressed property and you roll up in front of it, you pull out the app take a picture of it and you can just click right there, send postcard and it'll start a mailing. Um, now it has a, a, a follow-up campaign that you can set. You can mail up to eight postcards and you can space them. However, many, you pick the timing. Um, in my case, I stopped after three. I set it to stop after three. So it's still mailing. Um, yeah, they could be crazy. You've got a million postcards going out in the house. It's already sold. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, you know, it, it does have a, a basic CRM that ties in with it so you can track your leads so that you're not right. losing them. Um, right. it does have a skip tracing service so you can Crazy. find, uh, owners that have disappeared. Um, cause a lot of times, I mean, I know I've sent postcards to places where the house is, obviously vacant but it still shows that it's an owner occupant mm -hmm. um, and when you go skip tracing them like one that's coming to hit mind guy lives up in philadelphia but it still says that he lives here you know so um how oh, you know he's in philly because i did a skip trace a separate skip trace on that or oh, different just, okay. okay yeah not through this app um for that particular one uh, i did try to skip trace through this app with that for that one and it and it showed like I said, the house showed on their occupant. So you wouldn't, you know, if you tried to skip trace, it's not going to come up with anything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's not a perfect app, but uh, it's it's a good tool, better than nothing. And, uh, you know, to finish answering her question, so for $49 a month, you got the use of the software or the app, and then it's $0.99 cents for skip tracing. Um, and 99 cents per postcard. Otherwise, they've got another one with uh, for 200 bucks a month, and it's like 80 cents a piece for cards and uh, skip tracing. That ain't bad. No. I don't have any idea. You know, skip tracing used to be $35 a pop. Wow. I remember back in the day, I would pay $30. I mean, you guys are so spoiled. I mean, y'all don't even know it. And now you can do bulk skip tracing for 35 cents. A yeah. <laughs> but that's in bulk. <laughs> I think it's easier to find people, though, now. You know, I think. Oh, yeah. Home, phone numbers, and all that crap. I mean, cell phone shit. Everybody got. If you don't got a cell phone, you don't even exist. That's for sure. You know. I cut the line a couple of years ago after my mother passed away. <clears throat> we don't have a landline anymore. Let's see, Daniel, how many BPOs should I? We don't get BPOs. Chris, that's a good statement. The realtor knows everything. I do like Ron does. Is the realtor going to buy your house? Yeah. 
That's those are some powerful words. <laughs> I'm gonna buy your house as a realtor. Let's see, oh Instagram. Yes, Danny Ramos trying to raise your financial literacy. Twenty four hours a day. It's my ministry. My roundup family. While I'm looking for these questions here, you see your boy. This will be we getting ready to go. Oh, yeah. We're gone. <laughs> Next week class, I will be MIA. I won't be able to take questions, emails, or anything. My wife says I can't show my picture. <laughs> Any questions, class, or we're, that we're done? Does anyone know Ninja Kitchen Cooking with Love? That's a long boot. That's a long name. Ninja Cooking, Ninja Kitchen Cooking with Love. Oh, tomorrow night, I'm going. Tomorrow we got Jessica Siegel at two or three. And then I finally got my chef coming in tomorrow. We're going to be doing some curry chicken on live broadcast tomorrow night. Does anyone know for sure if Deal Dog works? Have you ever used Deal Dog? That's Matt, uh, I think that's Matt Andrews. You heard of that one, Smitty? No, I haven't. I don't know if it works. I mean, everything works. Nothing doesn't work. Uh, you know, in here, here in our, there, our area, uh, one guy that reached out to me a couple days ago, I asked him what was working. Um, he said, for the money, bandit signs were working best for him. I'm telling you, we just um, bought a whole bunch of them yesterday. And then, um, you know, and uh, it, it, so it, it depends. You just, you got to pick something and work it consistently. Um you know, the, the, um, another one of my mentors, he does all direct mail, but he has a lot. That's what he knows. He's very experienced in it. He has very specific lists that he pulls. Um, it's like, and, a, it's like a machine. Probably I would, I would yeah. think when I did it, I used to do so much direct mail and it was nonstop because you got so much coming back. You got to go yeah. in and propagate the list. Yeah, you know, make sure that you know sending out. Good God, I used to have buckets of return mails, maybe. Yeah, and oh yeah, me too. I mean, I used to mail five hundred a week. Was what I was. Amy and I were mailing, and um, I didn't. I I don't know. Maybe it'd get ten percent uh, returned. Yeah, it's probably less than that. It's probably five. Five. Yeah. There was there was always a lot of returns. Mm -hmm. You know, and and uh, and that's not cheap. You, you know, nowadays you're looking at probably a buck thirty a letter. Oh yeah, yeah. Mail it, letter. I mean, <clears throat> you, when I started, a stamp was twenty five cents, Smitty. <laughs> twenty five cents. I, what? Yeah, how much is the stamp now? It's either fifty three or fifty five. It just went up, but I don't mail anything thing. first class. Oh, I get those. I, I get the stamp here. I don't even know. I remember twenty five cent, and then I was doing postcards. They were like twenty three cent for postcard stamp. Yeah, postcards are still pretty economical. Mm -hmm. But um, and then the, the other thing that a lot of guys are having success with is ringless voicemail. Yeah, uh, and you and Eddie have talked about that. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I dealt with a coaching client today. They got a lead in New York from the ringless voicemail. Yeah, I wanna I wanna delve into that. I, I haven't, uh, like I said, I'm kind of toying with the uh, deal machine right now, and um, but I, I'll probably crank up and use ringless voicemail too. We, I know I know years ago when I was partnered with Amy, uh, we used it and we had it was amazing. The, the you couldn't get people to answer the phone, but boy, when they got a voice, they're like, "Hey, I missed your call, <clears throat> and I got this voicemail." I mean, they're just blown away that they missed a call. And, <coughs> you know, it's kind of the fear of loss. So they call you back right away. That's something, right? Yep. That's why it's so successful. Chris Monroe's using bandit signs. Yeah. People just don't want to put them out. Angela Ford, I'm scared I'm going to get fined with bandit signs in Cleveland. They don't play. Well, your boy was arrested. I've been arrested for putting up bandit signs, so the worst they can do is arrest you and fine you. But shit, pay the fine and move on. A couple hundred bucks. Brandon, can I share the chicken? Oh, tomorrow. 
You need to turn on smell a vision tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Dude is a chef at a local restaurant. I can, and he's like a ninja warrior work at a workout guy. I thought I saw another question here. I might have to come over and crash the party. <laughs> yeah, man, you know you always want to come, dog. I know. <laughs> uh, he's going to do rice and peas. He, he sent me a menu to choose from. My thing is this, Smitty. I'm just, man, I'm, as I'm learning to be a businessman, I'm going to have a study. When I'm going to do a video, I'm going to tell you how many minutes we spend washing clothes, cleaning up, preparing food. Um, just whatever thing I'm just trying to cut. Evan Pagan. Um, do you follow? Have you heard of Evan Pagan at all? Absolutely, yeah. He talks about all the stuff he doesn't do, and it's just amazing, man. It's amazing the stuff that he doesn't do. I need to get it out of this thick male brain of mine and quit doing that stuff myself. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> follow your is, lead. It's hard, man. It's hard. Uh, Chris, do not put your personal phone number on bandit signs. That's right, you go to jail like me. Chris, you are old. Yes, I am. Damn, they saying I'm old, man. But I'm older. That's right, Smitty. <laughs> You're just a kid, Chris. <laughs> uh, RV in my spring. Okay, Cody Sperber. You know, you can learn so much just going through these questions. Isa Vega, I hope that's right. Should you use your address? Can y'all put your city or your state in here? I want to know where my family's from. Should you use your address when sending out letters if you haven't set up a business PO box yet? Smitty, what do you think? I have. Um, you know, there's there are some crazy people out there. <laughs> Flash that picture. <laughs> um, I, so I have. I've never had some crazy person come to my door, although, you know, they could show up at, at your door. Um, I do prefer to use a P.O. box. It doesn't have to be a bad, you know, use a, a mailing. As a matter of fact, I, I uh, asked you, if since I didn't have a current P.O. box, um, I used yours for the return address. So I guess I should ask you, did I get any returned cards, Chris? <laughs> you know what's weird, Smitty? I have not checked. The mail since we came back from North Carolina, dog. Uh, I had a tenant tell me, Smitty, she was going to pay the rent. This has been two weeks, and then she calls me today. She goes, yeah, I'm going to mail the rent off. I just mailed the rent off today. So I'm glad I didn't even go. I didn't have any money in the box. <laughs> I'm, this lady is behind a month as my wife looks at me. Uh-oh. This lady is, oh, gosh. She's been with me so long, man. Anyway, do not put your home address class. I promise you, axe, an axe murderer will show up at your door. But if you if you don't want to spend the money, get a P.O. box. You can use P.O. boxes class, but when you, when you do it, I'm going to give you a tip. Now, I want somebody going to give me a dollar for this one. I'm going to give you a tip, my super chat. For your return addresses, get your P.O. box. Two things you can do. Well, I'm gonna tell you what we do first. We have we go to the UPS store or a local mailing company, and we just get a yeah. rent a box, and you can use a suite number. Yeah, your box is sweet. But if you want to be cheap, like I know some people are, you can use a peel box, but don't put peel box in the corner. You know about this one too, Smitty? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, use the po the mailing the post the post office physical address and then put your box number so if the post office is one two three easy street then you put unit 57 instead of p.o box is that what you would think it's maybe well i i've always used um a private mailing center like you use you know ups store fedex um pack and mail I, um and then it's just like pmb or or the hashtag and the number yeah. Um, because it's got a street address, yeah. Yep, put the address. But the PO box is gonna be probably what twenty percent of the cost of what the boxes that the mailing centers are charging. PO box is uh, what five dollars a month. I don't know. I'm sure they've gone up with the billions of dollars the postal service is losing. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know what they are. But, <laughs> but they are really, they're so cheap at, um, at, at a mailing center, it's worth it. ESA, I would say, if you want to be El Cheapo, get the post office mailing address and then put your PO box as the unit number. All right, so it's 123 East Street, Unit 57, City. Um, go ahead. All right, Issa, you got to give me a super chat, a dollar for that. <laughs> Derek, what up, Derek? This dude is so smooth. What did you do with the return mail? Did I rework it? You talking about years ago when I was getting, oh my God, I used to get depressed, man, really, back in, oh, <laughs> I come home, man. I was using my, my return address. I come home, I mean, I'd have stacks and stacks and stacks of mail. I had to go in. I didn't rework it too much, Derek, back then. There was no skip tracing. You know, we're talking about 2005, six, dog, seven, eight, maybe nine. You know, I, I'm way away from that now. You know, we're buying differently now, but. Yeah, when I was mailing was probably 2014 and 15 when I was doing a lot of direct mail. I don't and, think this uh, is around now, though. This stuff is brand new. This skip tracing and text messages and all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, I would do a little bit, but uh, not much. Mm -hmm. but that's a good idea, though, Derek, because the, the thing is, as we, as we all know, the harder to lead, the harder it is to find the person, the better the deal is. Yeah. Can't nobody else find them. Yep. You do that work that, well, you know, it, it's the old adage for success. You do what, do what other, do today what others won't to enjoy the success tomorrow that others won't, or, you know. Same same thing applies with this. If gotcha. you're the one that's diligent and goes out and, and finds that person that no one else can, yeah. good likelihood you've got the deal. Daniel, thank you for that dollar. I got one. We made one dollar. <laughs> thank you, brother Daniel. We made a dollar, babe. We should go step by step. Matter of fact, yeah, we'll do a step by step deal machine presentation next week, um, Smitty, or we got the next. Is that okay? Yeah. As soon as you get back from that vacay. Yeah, I got it. Chris Monroe, Ringless voicemail can help you get responses the fastest. Daniel, we were around. Oh, good Lord. Bees are talking about VHS tapes. Good God almighty. Brandon, am I cooking? No, I told you I hired a chef, dude. I can't cook. I used to be able to cook. My wife won't eat nothing I make. Uh, Chris, I was in jail. Yes, I went to jail for one day. The man locked me up for putting out bandit signs. Maybe I'll tell a story on that too. I'll do a whole video on that. Yeah, we'll do that, Daniel. We'll do Deal Machine next week. Um, does Smitty own any multifamily homes? Robel wants to know. Not anymore. I did. I had, I think, well, I think the largest I had was only eight units, but uh, um, I got out of that business. <laughs> I don't like renting apartments. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, if, if you've got a uh, 60 or 70 unit complex where it, it pays to have full-time management there, that's one thing, but that's totally different business. Gotcha. I, I don't like running apartments. Solution services. How many RVM ringless voicemails should you send in a week? Oh, and how many a day? You don't want to do too many at once, though. I mean, it's, it's going to be too much. I would say yeah, 200 man. a week. Yeah, I'm not, I haven't, I'm not actively doing RVMs, but 200 a week. Uh, I know Monroe will probably know better about that. Jermon C, what did you do to get over your fears and procrastination, Brother Smitty? You do a lot of self improvement. I do. Um, I've, you know, I've done, a, like I said, I'm, I'm doing a lot of work with John Astaraf. He's got specific programs on um, uh, winning the game of fear, winning the game of procrastination, uh, which I haven't started the procrastination one yet. That's coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, but it, it's just, 
overall, you know, I've done a lot with Tony Robbins. Took Chris to Tony Robbins, Unleash the Power Within. Mm, and, um, uh, you know, so it's, it's just constant self-improvement. And the way Tony Robbins puts it uh, is the acronym CANI, C-A-N-I, Constant and Never Ending Improvement. And never ending. Can I? Wow, I like that, brother. I like that, Smitty. And trust me, I've had to. <laughs> I've had to work pretty darn hard. Again, this skull is pretty thick, so uh, I, I had some significant fear issues and definitely some uh, significant procrastination issues. And I still do. We all do, but mm -hmm. you just have to become conscious of it and um, and constantly work on it monroe said he's using he's used the ups tool for 10 years for his personal address it doesn't go on anything i see that's a good idea i've been using this since the beginning too when we first learned about it ninja kitchen cooking with love i love that name <laughs> what's your name what's your screen name ninja cooking kitchen cooking for phone numbers he suggests cricket or ghetto getro Getro PCS. That is too funny. <laughs> Getro. Is that real, babe? Mm -hmm. B-Cot Studios. You get the P.O. Box tomorrow. What my dollar? B-Cot. <laughs> you better give my dollar. Uh, Getro PCS. I should make ghetto wireless. Oh, Chris is sending out a thousand ringless voicemails a week, man. You, but see, Chris is doing. I promise you, if you do that, you're gonna be, you're gonna be. That's gonna be Chris. That you know, it's gonna be way too much for the person starting out, man. You yeah. won't be able to follow up with them. Robel wants to know why you don't like renting small apartments out anymore, Smitty. It was just too much. Ha I'm too nice of a guy. You are <laughs> ask, nice. my, ask my wife. <laughs> I'm not the, the the one that's out there cracking the whip, you know, on uh, day five when the rent is past due. You and nice. uh, it, it's just, it's more hassle than it's worth for me. Maybe we'll bring you back. I don't want to get into it tonight about your landlord stories. Oh, I got those. <laughs> we could go back. God, how many years is it? I bought my first place in 84. And, um, you know, so I got plenty of them from back then, but then I've also got more current ones because, uh, again, the skull's pretty <laughs> thick and I haven't, you know, I, ha I haven't learned all of it. <laughs> There's always more to learn. Yeah. I remember that one resident you had when I first met them. I'm like, Smitty. It's just a matter of time for this thing come. I could tell the way it was. I could just see it. I'd already been where you was at. Yep. With the lady, what was her name? Not name, but uh, the older lady with the tennis living in there. That was a. Um, that was that was when I just knew enough about lease option to lease be dangerous. Option. That's right. I had just learned the. I hadn't even learned the basics from Ron Legrand, and I went out and did it. Again, you know. You try Pull the trigger and try it and you know <laughs> but again i was too nice that first year she was in there i got 10 10 percent late fees because her family ran her into the ground God, that's a but thousand yet. dollars yep <laughs> that's crazy yep. brandon smitty brandon says he had fear issues too what do you think were your biggest fears and what would you say looking back to give advice to overcome his fears, Smitty? You're good at that stuff, man. Quantifying fears. I remember yeah. when you were talking about that Tony Robinson, you were quantifying the fear of not being enough, the fear of lack. There was some other stuff about um, certainty, uncertainty. Like you were good at quantifying that stuff. Yeah, well, so, I mean, that goes into a whole other thing. Uh, we're all driven by different uh 
values and beliefs, um, human needs is what you're talking about there with certainty, oh, yeah. uncertainty. Okay. Um, but the biggest fear that held me back was the fear of rejection. Um, and that goes back to asking a girl out and, and that was, it was just stupid, but it, it was a trigger tell me about that, that locked me up for years. <laughs> um, and, 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 and I caused it myself the way I did stupid things you do in high school. But, uh, you know, that caused uh, a fear of rejection for, for going and asking, uh, you know, asking for the sale, asking for a you know, in, in the process of closing. Um, and, and you really have to just become aware of it, sit with yourself, kind of ask questions, you know, um, because for some fear of, Fear of failure is a big one. Fear of actually fear of success is a Dude, big. That is very scary. I talked to my wife about that. Fear of success is big. It it is because you know, hey, you, you know, for most of us, we can't imagine what it's like to make um, five hundred grand a year. But uh, you know, for others, making five hundred grand a year is you broke peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, it's, so you really have to sit and just kind of ask yourself, you know, what what is holding me back? And, they, and again, um, like I said, John Asraf has a really great program called the uh, um, Winning the Game of Fear. And then included with that is Winning the Game of Procrastination. Nice. Um, that's what I've found very helpful. Um, specifically for fear and uh like i said i haven't gotten into the procrastination one but i've done stuff with asraf for probably six seven years um <coughs> with winning the game of money and his neuro gym and stuff mm -hmm. um it's all brain-based science-based um you know which is what i appreciate since i came from an engineering and science background very nice okay smitty Thank you so much, Brother Smitty. I will get up with you. You already did your final thoughts class. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I'll see you tomorrow with Jessica Attorney. We're going to be talking about her depositions. She did a whole bunch of depositions this week, Smitty. Mm, that ought to be a good one. Oh, my <laughs> she Lord. She always has some great <laughs> stories and, and insights. <laughs> she did depositions. She, was, she sent me an email earlier. Two pages of thoughts that she had. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so class, I'll see you tomorrow. What else? Oh, I got my boy, my passport. I'll give it to you. Next week, class, I will be on vacation. So if you email me, I'll get back to you. And the following, I'm coming back on the 6th. So I will miss you, but I've got to get a break. All right. Okay, Smitty, thank you so much for your time. Hey, you're welcome. Y'all take you care. Soon. All right. All right, bye.